we'll have some of the new the short intro, and then Cam's going to say a little bit more about the beyond pricing role. The, uh, the two presentations kind of securely dovetail into each other, all about how you can use the tools to do better revenue management. Um, my two hats are 360 Blue for my day job. I've been doing it about 10 years. Like Jeremy, I came into this career. I have a stance used to be a lawyer and a developer and then ended up with too many units that weren't producing enough revenue. So I decided to get into vacation rental. And uh, some of you know from the last time I was able to get up here, the, the last time we were up in front of you was on behalf of our Glad to Have You Fund. And that really came about after about two and a half, three years in the space. And uh, we've been to a show, we had seen Jeremy Gall, what he was able to do with flip keys, how he took a problem, something that was significant that everybody was facing and put a simple piece of software in front of everybody and, and really have a significant impact on the space. So uh, we went back to, to work and, and we're looking for an itch to scratch. There's a guy I've read a couple of books by a software company called 37 Signals and they're big believers that if you want to create great software, create great software that scratches an itch that you have. Don't try to build software for somebody else's problem. Way to figure out a problem that you have that genuinely, authentically needs solved and create a, a piece of software that does that. So, uh, we spent a couple of years playing in the space with the Glad to Have You software platform. Uh, had the privilege to work with some really smart developers, put a fun product in front of you guys, and at the time was the biggest thing that was problematic for us. It was that guest book, it was in every unit that we felt like we were updating every week. Felt like we never had the right information in front of folks. The Wi-Fi units, the code, bad for guests, was bad for us. Um, we were lucky enough to sell that product at HomeAway. It's about how you view it. Um, and it it, uh, it it's been a, a learning curve to you know send your kid off to college and kind of watch what it turned into. There were an awful lot of things that we wanted it to do that it hasn't done. And uh, there's a lot of things that we wanted to to see the industry have tool-wise that they don't have right now. And so I've uh, really been on the sidelines for the last couple of years, 360 Blue, wanting it day to day, and uh, it had another itch that's kind of wearing us out on the day to day process, and it's revenue management. Uh, I uh, hired a brilliant CEO six years ago and uh, have been trying to, to not show up in the meetings ever since, and I, I do a pretty poor job of it. Uh, the one meeting that is dear and dear to our heart that I always are at is, is the revenue meetings. And the revenue meetings for us are, uh, are probably a lot like they are for you. It's, a, it's an effort to gather as much information as you can. And then you get in the meetings and you say, well, how does that compare to last year? What's everybody else in the space doing? And they're just, they're not artful, efficient, uh, well-advised meetings. They seem very, very time intensive and very painful. And the reason we're back today is to talk about our efforts to try to start to scratch that. Uh, so, big data business intelligence, they're buzzwords, joke to the hospitality shows for hotels three or four years ago, that's all they were talking about. Um, we've got a massive amount of data that's in front of us nowadays. We've got uh, all your inquiries from Navis, products and traps. We've got beautiful data into your Google Analytics. It's a, it's a really nice screen to show you that. You've got some website data. Obviously, a lot of your core information is coming out of your property management systems, many of which are more recent, but an awful lot of us in the room are using systems that were built 13, 15, and not 20 years ago. I was used to hear the story of the AS400 systems and what, 30 years old is that? Uh, and so, if you look at the picture on the right, that's what you get when you, when you do a quick Google search under images for hotel revenue management. When you do a, a search for vacation rental revenue management, you can imagine it, it doesn't look anything like that. It's a couple of icons, a few pictures, maybe uh, a picture of the beach, but there, there just aren't any tools that beautifully illustrate to you, still beyond pricing, what you had uh, a hard time pulling together for your revenue management. Uh, so what we wanted to do is try to gather that information in an actionable, efficient, and visible way so that we can spend more time making business decisions and less time gathering it. In a hand hospitality, I have a good quote here that's kind of obvious with work. Reflecting on every company has massive amounts of data. It's what one does with that data, such as providing relevant dashboards, click through deep dive action reporting, and analytical 
analytical insight that can foster a competitive edge. So sometimes we feel excited when we get in the conference room and we have 20 different sets of reports that give us a lot of different insight that we study, but they're really not in an actionable format where we can sit down at an hour long revenue meeting and make quick decisions about what's happening. And that's something we think that our industry severely lacks, and it's, it's just driving me nuts. I know it's driving our team nuts. And we're super envious of the hotel space and the type of meetings that they can have and the type of revenue reports that they're able to look at. Um, yield management, Suzuki is the first one I heard mention that years and years and years ago when we first started. It's not complicated. It's just about having the right product for the right customer at the right time for the right price. Obviously, pricing is a key component in what we're talking about with respect to that. And, and to really be able to do that in the vacation rental space, you've got to have a couple of obvious full pieces of data. You need to know your historical guest behavior. You can pull that, like I said, into our current meetings and our perform, like lead time, who's looking when, how far out do we have to try to get information and probably guess for spring break or summer. Uh, are big houses different? How does that affect if they one bedroom house, they can book last minute, or 10 bedroom house, book months ahead? And you, you guys know the pattern, it's just hard to get Historical performance, how spring break do it this year versus last year. For us, the first two weeks are doing awful. It's Easter shifted and it's doubled up with the line of spring break. And being able to quickly assess that is important, obviously, for your decision making. The market demand, we've got lots of different areas. They're one of the experts in it now on CAMs in, but like I said, the first two weeks are down for us. And then the real tool that we want to bring in as a company that we feel like is deeply lacking is why. We're Amy came and kind of presented the concept in the initial screen. We stopped what we were doing and we said, hey, this is an itch that needs scratch. Can we join your team, bring our technology uh, efforts to bear and help you deliver this to the process? So, really, when it comes to comparative data, I'll, I'll, I'll dig in here in a second, but you want the right tools, the right visibility so you can quickly draw the right conclusions. One, one of the things I think is instructive is if you look at a, a hotel revenue manager, if you do job searches for hotel revenue they're expensive positions with deep analytical backgrounds of people who know how to study charts and make quick decisions about what you need to do. And there's a whole series of KPIs. They have terms that are just ubiquitous, ubiquitous across their platform that seem like everyday drivers, like Rev Bar, and they, they just don't make it into the our vernacular that much. We spend a lot of time talking about occupancy and price, and that's mostly what I hear our space talking about. And I think they're faster than the uh, if you compare that job where they're mostly taking uh, reports and dashboards that you have, like you saw on the first screen, and they're analyzing and making quick decisions on it, what we're doing, at least where, where I'm at, I feel like we're spending an awful lot of time pulling data. We're then trying to pull it into the nice reports. We've got smart people who are really good at pivot tables trying to make it look nice for us. But then they're having to explain those reports and we're asking plenty of questions because it's not as deep and easy for us to digest. <laughs> and then try to make some quick decisions. Yeah, and expand on hotels a little bit. Uh, just in the comparison of vacation rentals to the hotel industry, I don't think it's out of sheer laziness or even the necessary lack of sophistication that when you Google hotel revenue management, you have endless options. Um, because the vacation rental uh, pricing nut to crack is a lot more difficult because it's all singular inventory. You know, um, hotels may have a couple room types and one set of suites. Whereas you guys probably have inventory ranging from studios to 12 bedrooms. Um, and geographically in different locations, and there's just so many more variables that go into the uniqueness of a vacation rental that uh, that's kind of a, one of the main theories we have that hotels were able to capitalize on dynamic pricing and revenue management decades before. And it's similar with uh, airlines as well, who also have the luxury of having mobile in inventory. So it'd be really nice if you guys can move some of your locations based on supply and demand. That's what airlines have the luxury of doing. So that's kind of why it's been so difficult uh, to price single inventory to deal with revenue management and vacation of this bit. Yeah, quite honestly, we didn't want to build a tool. We wanted to go up to the show and steal one of the great tools and come back and be the first one to use it and be more efficient and more dynamic than, than the folks in our area. And the tools just don't exist there. Pick your room type, and, and maybe you have the concierge floor, the VIP floor, and the other floor. Maybe you have the second location, but you don't have the ability to access the data at the way we need it. So uh, it became apparent that their tools just won't penetrate the market. 
And it's kind of it's been tried in vacation rentals actually. I'm sure all of you have some sort of variable or rules based pricing. If you look at some of these PMS systems, their entire pricing model is based on rate rules for rate unit type adjustments. Um, and that is very clearly an attempt to copy kind of what hotels and airlines are doing, but there's a lot of pitfalls when you're pricing strictly off of your own inventory, leaving owners that get booked up too, or too far in advance, they're getting kind of screwed over in the fact that they're not getting the, the correct price at the right time. So, Most everybody in the room obviously knows Amy and the passion that she's had with this kind of comparative dashboard. It's, it's really been a core center of her since I met her gosh, seven or eight years ago. And uh, we played with the concept of folding it into the lab right before we sold it, didn't get there. So we're really uh, more than excited to have her come back around and say, hey, we're still trying to build it. Uh, we seem to be interested in joining us in the effort. And what kind of put us on a collision course to say, yeah, we want to, we want to devote a substantial amount of our time, energy, and effort into this is, is what's going on with the conversation we had this morning on the first <coughs> and, and it's the OTAs that jumped into pricing. You know, we, we've got folks, and, well, I guess the most obvious side is when we ask, show of hands who trust Homeway today. There's, I don't want to say that nobody has any trust for them, but there's certainly a, uh, an opportunity for us to ask a lot more questions than we used to when we kind of blindly accepted that we were headed down the right path. It felt like well, we all were kind of in a uniform alliance headed towards a, you know, a utopia that just isn't there anymore. Now, I think all of us wake up and say, hey, where am I getting the information from? Do I trust it? What's their motivation? And I'm not saying it's, it's not the right motivation, but I'm saying I, I, don't, I don't think any of us in here take it for granted anymore that an OTA is going to reach out and give us a pricing recommendation that's best for our business. So getting accurate data from a trusted source so that you can make your own pricing decisions and having multiple sources so you can see how they fit together just seems fundamental and critical to being able to run a good business in this level of market. Yeah, I think you always have to, to question uh, you hit the nail on the head there, question the motivation of, of these different products because uh, a metaphor we often use is if you were to sell an iPad on eBay and eBay gave you a recommended price being an auction site, um, chances are they're going to tell you a price that's well beneath market averages basically because they want, they're a volume business and they make money based on the number of transactions. So the cheaper that they, they pull the price down from what the true value is, the higher likelihood that it will sell on their specific site. Um, so questioning like the motivations of specific pricing programs strictly to one OTA is, is definitely necessary. Well, think about it. Even if you assume that they have this altruistic uh, approach to pricing and that they're not in a, in a huge fight with Airbnb and, and all the other OTAs, there are a lot of different pricing strategies that are unique to your business. If you, if you look at the... Uh, the list there to find your strategy. I mean, those are the most obvious. If you go into the hotel vernacular list of different ways you can price based on how your competitors are pricing around you. And you get up and you, you go to the revenue school in hotel land, you start to learn all these strategies, and you just don't hear those in, in our ecosystem because we don't have easy ways to go in and pull our, our competitors' occupancy, revenue, average daily rate. Probably do what we do, which is you get somebody to go find all the people in your neighborhood that have prepared properties, and you go look and you see how full are they on March 13th, how full are they on March 21st, but you can't see anywhere past it. You take a little bit of a guessing approach and figuring out are those the owners saved, are they blocked off, are there bookings, and uh, it leaves a lot to be desired. And the idea of taking this comparative data and using it in analytics is nothing new to anybody here, it's important to come up with. The star report on the left is pretty much in, in, in every hotel that I know of in the U.S. and a significant share internationally. It's the, it's the Bible of comparative reports. A lot of you have seen it. Some of you have bigger resorts and more properties. Most of those of big cities rely on it. But it's a, it's a deeply comprehensive spreadsheet that tells you what your neighbors are doing with respect to their pricing, their occupancy, their revenue, their rev bar, their ADR, and... Uh, and folks in the hotel space that get up and they rely upon it, and that's how they make their pricing decisions. And our goal was to be able to take something like that, where you're getting direct data from the hotel, turned into a single source, so you've got pure data that you can count on and trust, and no motivation, and 
Amy's built, built her reputation for 10 years in this space to be able to come in front of you guys and put a product in front of you and say, hey, this is just your data fed back to you in a way that you can value it. So that was the goal. So this is what we're in the middle of coming to you. We're, we're about 45 days to two months early. Uh, I don't want to do a product demo, but I'll flip through a couple of quick screens. They are much further along. We're a user of Beyond Pricing and 360 Blue. Uh, we've been baiting for a while and adding new properties. And so I'll give you the quick demo of where we're headed and let me give you a little bit more depth on what Beyond Pricing is. And their current tool. It, it's pretty simple. It, it's On the left, you've got a long series of filters so that you can go in and say, look, I want to look at properties by unit time. I want to look at one bedrooms, two bedrooms, three bedrooms, so I can see how the occupancy works. I want to look at revenue from sold to all. However you want to filter or digest your property, you click the boxes, and then you choose the KPIs. We'll have about 20 core KPIs. The obvious ones are like occupancy, rev car, ADR, but we've got some new ones we'll introduce that are unique to, to vacation rental units. Really don't exist in the hotel space that I think will give you the ability to compare all your properties with your neighbor's properties, even though it's not one homogenous. Um, so simple graph here, you can just see occupancy by week. We understand as we understood with GLAD, and you've got to be able to, to let people customize everything because every one of you does your business different. So a whole lot in the back end about how you run your business, configure it quickly, and then quick visibility into seeing it. Two more quick screens. This is a PM view. It's a little fuzzy. My marketing skills aren't great, but you can see we, we chose on the left to split it by neighborhood. This could be by anything you want. So Gulf front versus time Gulf front. It could be one bedroom versus two bedroom versus ten bedroom. You can put weeks across the top, months across the top, seasons across the top. You can look at occupancy. You can look at rev par. You can look at average daily rate. And the goal is to have a couple of screens that really tell you how you're comparing to your neighbors without visibly being able to go in and see which neighbor, because none of us want to be able to have our data exposed. So we've got a ton of safeguards in place, a lot of which are barred from the hotel space and the star. And say, look, you have to have a, a large enough cross section. There have to be at least four of us in the market. Nobody can have more than a 50% market share. But the goal is get enough data in there to where you can hide who's who so your data is not exposed. And then give some visibility into how am I doing against the market. Is everybody having a tough time with the first two weeks of spring break, or is it just me? And Jeremy Gall did a real good job of talking about that communication with owners that I think is, is still deeply lacking. We spend an awful lot of time at 360 Blue over the last couple of years, and we say, well, how's, the, how's, it, how's it looking in spring break? And we do an awful lot of ad -lib. What we really want to be able to do is say, look, the first two weeks are down, but they're down for everybody. It has nothing to do with us, so here's what we're doing with pricing. Here's our strategy. Here's the support. And be able to prove. Last one, just another view. This is a, a, a unit specific view. Again, you've gone in, you've looked, and you've compared how you're doing in the market. And now you just want to do a deep dive into your own data. So we've got some screens that are comparative, some screens that are non comparative. This one breaks it down by the unit level because of your choice over here. It looks at total revenue by week. And then for the last couple of columns, we just let you add any other KPI you want. Some people want to look at occupancy next to revenue. Some people want to look at it next to open days. Your projection, which you can put in the admin. Basically, we try to go in and talk to companies around us and say, how do you really get in the room and decide on how to set your rate and what to do? You copy those screens and lay them on that. It's not a lot of magic to it, but I think a, a lot of utility for the most ones you start. Final thing, what's next for us? Uh, some interesting things happen on the hotel side. Starwood is playing with weather, and we've had an awful lot of success with it. They've got about 1,200 hotels around the world. They spend an awful lot of money in big data. And they're really going in and trying to, to study on a larger scale some data about what's happening with weather patterns, how it's affecting cancellation rates, what kind of cancellation rates you need to offer, which markets during which times of the year, and uh, how do you need to adjust your prices based on anticipated weather patterns. Uh, Red Roof Inn is doing a very similar thing. They've been very successful in terms of studying uh, airport delays caused by weather patterns and then driving their pricing 
based upon those anticipated delays. So you, you can see a weather pattern coming. You know oxygen is going to be higher around Atlanta that night. You drive your prices up in advance of cancellation. So we're doing the same thing. We're partnering with AccuWeather, and we're starting to drag in other interesting data so that when you guys are looking at your own data and you're looking at your competitors' data, we can put some other pieces of information there that might give you an opportunity to say, hey, if we see that this weather pattern is always happening, we're not going to have snow or likely to have rain, how should we price in accordance with that? And then the last thing, which is kind of on the B2 stage, is this, this idea of predictive analytics, which is to say, we can show you some pretty curves going up to here, but what's going to happen after that? And you can see my curve year over year for three years. Get the computer model to tell me what the next three dots are going to look like. We think we know what they're going to look like, but we're interested to see what, what the data show. So that's what we're excited to be bringing it to you soon. Cool, guys. I'm just expanding on general yield and dynamic pricing for a bit. Kind of getting short on time, so I'll fly through this pretty quickly. Um, so generally, when you have two general goals with setting prices, one is setting your initial static price, and two is actually changing those prices based on supply and demand changes that you're seeing. So what kind of data can you use uh, to make these decisions? How many of you use comps on a pretty frequent basis? And are those mostly uh, your direct competitors or from the OTAs? Uh, how do you analyze all, cool. Um, you can use the occupancy of your own listing. Uh, I talked about some of the pitfalls to avoid. Um, hotels and airlines, like I said, have their own inventory. It's accurate for them, not as quite applicable for vacation rentals. You can also look at market-wide occupancy, and we specialize in forward-looking demand analysis, as well as other sources like VRM Intel, um, a few other ones. So I already kind of covered why uh, pricing off your own occupancy data is, isn't great. Um, so I wanted to highlight why using macro market data to price is what we've found to be on pricing to be the most statistically significant uh, analysis for predicting a nightly rate based on forward-looking supply and demand. So we get our data from a bunch of different sources, including a lot of the OTAs. We have proprietary software that's able to dedupe, so we're not double and triple counting listings, with the goal of having an incredibly holistic understanding of exactly how many vacation rentals are in any given area, um, and how many are still available, booked, or blocked at any given point in time. Um, so this shows some screenshots here. Of, this is historical um, occupancy. We also have forward-looking occupancy to add context to our prices, uh, with the example being, um, say for the Hangout Music Festival around here, there are um, a cluster of, say, 123 bedrooms within a mile radius. If we see that 95 of those 120 are already rented for the Hangout Festival, the lineup comes out, another 15 are booked, so there's only 10 12% left. Um, that is the forward-looking demand analysis that, that we take into account. And that can be applicable to weather, it can be applicable. A good example of that is uh, if anyone has any resort or any places in, um, in the west, in the mountains, it's been a terrible ski year. Uh, and so we actually look at forward-looking demand be pacing much slower than last year and will bring prices down. So rather than using directly the weather analysis, we let the market tell us, hey, this is a bad year, people are not coming, why snow is the answer. But all we care about is that firm reservations are going down. So we need to react to that and actually drop prices to be able to get the few amount of it occupancy that people are actually coming. And then two, we also uh, bought a company called SmartCoast about nine months ago, integrated some of their technology into Beyond Pricing that pulls from uh, individual listings on Airbnb and Homeway, all publicly available data. So this is a little different than VRM Intel where they're collecting actual um, your own real data. Um, it's kind of sanity track to see how you perform against uh, neighbors directly next to you on both of those platforms. So I wanted to point out, um, just kind of dive into the data nerd in me uh, for PCB as well as Alabama Gulf Coast. Um, this is historical occupancy, and wanted to show you guys some interesting things you probably already know. Um, but uh, variables can change year over year, which is why historical is a good starting point, but forward looking is actually the most important. Um, do we have any managers from Panama City Beach here? Awesome. Cool. I can pick your brain then. I, I didn't check all the events beforehand. Uh, looks like there's something huge in April that we'll see forward-looking demand. Um, obviously, 
uh, this is summer here, uh, pretty flattened out. And one, one thing I thought was pretty interesting is you'll see these huge swings uh, from weekend to weekday. And then in the summer, it kind of flattens out. That's primarily because you almost all managers here have seven-day minimums, which pulls up the midweek occupancy during high season. Um, does anyone not have seven-day minimums in this region during summer? Nice. And does anyone have Saturday to Saturday seven-day minimum? Cool. So there's a, minimum stays are also a factor in yield and revenue management. That's a whole another can of worms. Um, but it does impact uh, both how the market is priced as well as how you can optimize revenue. At Beyond Pricing, we'd rather you be 80% occupied at $100 a night than 100% occupied at $70 a night. So there are advantages in terms of dropping your minimum stay depending on the season, depending on your set of inventory. Um, this is actually just took this today. This is the forward looking occupancy for two bedrooms in Panama City Beach. Um, seeing that same massive spike in demand. Uh, for that April event. Do you, do you know what that April event is? It's the Sand Jam. Sand Jam? It would be a spring jam, but this is more of an alternative music festival. Is that a music festival? Right. Gosh, music festivals are crazy. In every market we're in, they're, they're popping up. Um, the Hangout Music Festival, too, I'll, I'll highlight in a sec. Um, but we're already seeing, still three months out, an increased occupancy from about 18% to almost 40%. So uh, we have an individual nightly price for every listing that we, um, we price. It's an automated system that feeds into your PMS based on supply and demand. So if we see this jump from 40% to 50%, the system automatically knows that based on the delta to that date of stay and the increase in occupancy or, or decrease in supply is actually what we're truly looking at, um, that we can actually really push the boundaries on, on rates in that, in that specific time. Wanted to also point out where we're already increasing pretty dramatically for Thanksgiving. Um, small little bump here. But that two and a half or so percent increase this far out in our system knows to increase prices dramatically just based on the, the booking window being so far away. Um, oh, one other thing's interesting, uh, and this is pretty unique to, to Florida. We don't see this in a lot of other markets. Um, but you see the big increase in occupancy for snowbirds. Uh, so we actually had to kind of work around that because that could be a false indicator for looking at forward looking demand that all these places are getting booked up. Um, so we take into account the actual ADR that a lot of these places are getting booked up at and are able to kind of exclude that false positive, especially because so many of them are booked a year in advance or well, well more advanced uh, than traditional stays. See a huge spike for Labor Day as well, um, which we see, yeah, we see a slight bump here for Labor Day already. Now highlighting uh, the Alabama Gulf Coast, we see a similar trend where weekdays, uh, actually are pretty extreme in mid-season and kind of fade away because of the seven night minimums during high season. Similar to increase for Labor Day, um, October, I think it's a shrimp festival. Um, and what I'll highlight here is this big spike right here is the Hangout Music Festival. Um, and we're actually able to push rates pretty dramatically during, um, especially far in advance. So one good example is actually the, uh, the eclipse and that happened this past year. We had some managers in Bend, Oregon that were getting, uh, we were seeing noticeable pickups of say five to seven percent, but a full year out. So we rose rates super dramatically. People thought we were pretty insane. Um, then half of their inventory was booked in the next couple of weeks for the ones not using us. And they realized how big an event this was. Because 160,000 people went to Bend, Oregon, which is a town of a few dozen thousand. Um, so that's another example of why it's important to look at forward-looking demand, because year over year, the events aren't always the same, uh, let alone the demand for the events. So we always see when July 4th falls on us, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or Monday, we are able to push rates much more dramatically because people are booking trips around that long weekend. Whereas last year was on a Tuesday or Wednesday, similar to this year, the demand uh, definitely goes down when it's midweek because people don't have the luxury of taking the entire week off. So analyzing forward-looking demand is the only way to kind of accurately predict that, per se. Um, you see a similar trend, it's already seeing a spike for Labor Day, as well as uh, that October event. Um, cool, and I, I want to just open up to questions. I know quite a bit about just this general market as, as a whole, um, and in terms of pricing strategies. Didn't want to give you guys the gauntlet of actual um, what Beyond Pricing specifically does, but we're, we're a nightly rate recommendation engine software uh, for revenue managers 
to basically empower revenue managers to, to better do their job. Because using your own data, historical um, spreadsheets, it can be complicated, even if you have quality data, to turn that into a nightly price that is automated into your system and changing based on supply and demand. So with that, I wanted to open it up to questions, either for Jason or myself. Yeah. If you don't have a revenue manager, but you have a staff member that's fine to be good at it, you yep. Yes. Uh, so the vast majority of our, our uh, clients actually are either head of marketing, head of sales. Um, the revenue managers tend to wear a lot of hats, depending on the size of the company. Um, but it actually makes them incredibly more productive because they, they have the nightly recommendations and basically have the ability to edit or change. Um, but the system, we have a feedback loop called the health score that you set a starting point for each home um, and then prices fluctuate in high season higher than that, low season lower than that. Uh, and the frequency of bookings coming in is the metric we use along with lead time to basically, I teach the revenue managers how to use that information to make changes. Because if a unit goes three weeks with no bookings and has ample availability, prices across the board are likely too high. And so the feedback there would be to actually drop, drop that starting price. And if uh, if your owners splurge and redecorate the interior of their room and then you get professional photography, bookings start flooding in, you get 30 days of reservations in a week, then you know that, hey, the value of this unit just went up. And that's actually super important because if you have two identical one bedrooms in the same building, um, there's so many variables and factors that can actually uh, create a difference in terms of the value of the units there. Um, things like negative reviews, or like I said, uh, updating the units or whatnot. So um, reacting to frequency of bookings and speed is, is the primary metric we use in the feedback group. Ours just tended to make it easier so that you don't have to have as much more power. Hey, real quick, just a final part. That's for for St. John being here in the conference and, and sitting down to the end here, some exciting revenue stuff. Um, from a, from our, our software standpoint, kind of only works if everybody plays in the neighborhood or enough people play. So our price point's a hundred dollars a month. That's it. Um, it's intended to get data in front of all of us. And why we work so well in conjunction with VR and Intel, I just wanted to highlight that a little bit. Um, the more accurate everyone is at pricing, the better it will be for everyone. Uh, there's arbitrage opportunity right now to be better than all your competition. Um, but if everyone keeps just using comp data and trying to undercut each other, it's kind of a price war to the bottom. So if everyone does, like Jason said, have the right product for the right price at the right time um, by using external and internal data sources, the entire industry itself is going to be better, which is why we encourage to use as much data as possible and then turn that into actionable prices. Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys.